Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at quadratic functions. We'll be identifying the vertex and the axis of symmetry. We'll be graphing them using the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the y-intercepts. And finally, we'll find the minimum and the maximum values. Let's get started. All right, so finding the vertex is actually very important for a parabola. Notice that in this parabola, if we knew the vertex, we know the exact point where it stops decreasing and begins to increase. Okay, so in this case, this vertex would be a minimum. Even if it looked the other way, if it was going like this, in this parabola, once again, look, the vertex will tell you where it stops increasing and begins to decrease, and this will be our maximum. So finding the vertex is very important. Now, a lot of people forget how to get it. And this is what this is what I use as my trick. I already know the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And, and you should have that memorized also. To find your vertex, the first thing you'll need to do is get this much you want to find out how much is negative b over 2a. Okay, and this tells you the x-coordinate for your vertex. Okay, so your vertex, your first coordinate, your x-coordinate is going to be that. Once you have your x-coordinate, all you have to do is put that back into the equation and you'll find out what your b is. Okay, so you just put it back in and it'll tell you, um, sorry, what your y is. Okay, let's go ahead and try one out. All right, here I'm given f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. Uh, this is my a, that's my b, that's my c. And notice that my c doesn't even matter when it comes to getting this. I'm just going to go ahead and worry about a and b, and I'm going to substitute that in there. So negative b, so the opposite of positive 8, is negative 8 so negative 8 over 2 times 8 a is 2 and this is negative 8 over 4 which is negative 2 so my x coordinate is negative 2 to get my y coordinate I just have to put that back into the my original function so f of negative 2 is 2, negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 5, 2 times 4 minus 16 plus 5, 8 minus 11, and this is negative 3. So I know my vertex is at negative 2, negative 3. There. Let me give you one, you can try it out. Go ahead and pause the video, find the vertex for these two quadratic functions, and I'll show you the answers in 3, 2, 1. Here are your answers. I hope you got them right. All right, looking at one of the examples that I gave you, we can further analyze what we have. If we look at our A, remember that was A, B, and this is our C. If we look at our A, if A is greater than zero, so if it's positive, then our parabola is going to open up. It's going to look like that. If our a is less than zero, it's going to open downward. Okay, so that already lets us know if it's going to go open up or down. And looking at this one, we know that this one's going to open down. Another thing that we know. Okay, we work for the vertex. A vertex also tells us our line of symmetry. Okay, in this case, it's going to be where x is equal to 1. Okay, that means that if I were to graph this, so here is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I know it's going to open downward. Okay, and it's actually a reflection here on my vertex. Okay, and this line of reflection is where x is equal to 1. 
Okay, so we know three things so far. If it opens up or down, the vertex, and the axis of symmetry. Okay, let's go ahead and find the y-intercepts and we can actually go ahead and graph this. All right, remember, to find the y-intercept, you need to let x equal zero. So you're looking for f of zero, and you're just putting it in there. Negative three times zero squared plus six times zero plus one. Well, that's gone, that's gone, all I have is one. So I know that where my y-intercept is at zero, one. So this is going to, remember, this is coming down, right? Because our a is negative. So at zero, one is where my parabola crosses the y-axis. And remember, since this is a line of symmetry, this is one unit away from my line of symmetry. So the same thing is going to happen here. This is going to be one unit away. And we bring it down. And there, I have my graph for this quadratic function. And I used the vertex, line of symmetry, my y-intercept, and looking at my a, knowing whether it goes up or down. With enough practice, you can actually graph them a lot faster than uh, just putting numbers in. One more thing. Here, our vertex lets us know that this is a maximum. Why? Because this is the point where, in our parabola, it stops to increase and begins to decrease. So whether it opens up or down, it'll let you know whether your vertex is a maximum or a minimum. All right, let's go ahead and get the information for this function together. First thing I'm going to find is the vertex, and I know that's negative b over 2a. So here I notice that a is negative 1, b is negative 6, and c is 0, since there are none. So for my vertex, I'm going to put in 6 over 2 times negative 1. Notice that it was negative b, so the opposite of a negative 6 is a positive 6. So this is just 6 uh, over negative 2, so negative 3. Okay, so that's my x-coordinate, and it's also my axis of symmetry. So my symmetry is equal to x equal to negative 3. My y, I have to put this inside the original, so f of negative 3 is negative negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3. Okay, be careful with this. That square only goes to that negative 3. There's still one out here, so you got to hold it. you got to save it. So this is negative, whatever that is. Negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, negative 6 times negative 3. Okay, positive 18. So this just says negative 9 plus 18, so that's just 9. So I know my vertex is at negative 3, 9. And I have my line of symmetry. Now I'll go ahead and get my y-intercept. So remember, that's when you want to find f of 0. So negative 0 squared minus 6 times 0. Well, that's just 0. So my y-intercept is at 0, 0. All right, let's use the information we have to go ahead and graph this. We know our vertex is at negative 3, 9. So negative 1, 2, 3, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's over here. That's our vertex. Looking at our a, we see that it's negative. Right? Since it's negative, we know that this is going to open downward. Okay, so we know we're looking for something that's going down. Our axis of symmetry is negative 3, where x is negative 3, so that's all along this line here, where our vertex is at. Our y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make the axis of symmetry. Line of symmetry. Notice that it is 
one, two, three units away, okay, from the point that we know. So that means that on the other side, like a mirror, there must also be another point that's three units away. One, two, three. Okay, and we do get what we expect. We did expect it to go down, as we saw from our A. So all you have to do now is connect uh, as best as you can. I'm probably gonna mess this up like usual. Uh, it's a little bit harder to do it on the board, but it'll go up. And then we'll bring it back down, okay? And this is our maximum as well, okay? And there you have it, we graphed it using just the information that we know. All right, now it's your turn. Go ahead and find the vertex, the line of symmetry, the y-intercept, and go ahead and graph it. I'll show you the answers in three, two, one. All right, I know my graph came out horrible, but I tried it like five times. Uh, but these are the right answers, and I hope you got them right.